will describe the procedure for setting up a Bitronics M6 nanometer to operate in a typical SCADA system. We'll be using DNP protocol and a conventional RS-485 serial connection to an Orion LX which is functioning as the RTU. All the settings on the M650 can be configured either from the front panel or by means of a web page interface served up by the meter itself. Both configuration methods have some advantages relative to the other. So in order to give the viewer some feel for both methods, we'll start by setting up the basic network configuration from the front panel. Then when that's done, we'll connect the meter to a local area network so we can use the web page interface to complete the rest of the configuration from there. First we put the meter in the configuration setup mode by pushing the two keys farthest to the right and the left simultaneously. We enter the setup mode in the first category, which is demand resets. These categories are explained in more detail in the user's guide, but I think they're also pretty self-explanatory. You'll see what I mean as we step through a few of them. Use the down arrow key to advance from one category to the next. We see number 1.2 is for inputs. Inputs just means setting up the display to indicate primary engineering units when the meter is connected to CTs and PTs. The next category is 1.3, which is for the network addressing, which is the one we're looking for. It may be a little hard to make out the fine print in this video, but the home key has the word enter written below it, and the cyclone key, the one on the far right, has the word exit written below it. When you get to the category you're interested in, use the enter key to select that the first subgroup listed under network settings is the IP address. I'll demonstrate the configuration now by setting up 10.10.10.12. All M650 meters come with the IP address set to a factory default of 192.168.0.171. So we'll have to change that. This is a good time to say a few words about navigating around. See how the IP address setting in the meter has one digit that's discernibly brighter than all the others? The bright digit is the active digit. You can use the enter key to make the active digit increment by one count each time you strike the key. If you miss the number you want, just keep going. The number wraps back to zero after you step past nine. Use the up and down arrow keys to select which digit you want to be active. Obviously, an IP address must have 12 digits, but the M650 can only display five digits at a time on one line. So as you use the up and down arrow keys to scroll past the end of the display, the IP address moves to reveal whatever digits weren't visible before that. I'll set the IP address to 10.10.10.12. When we're done with the IP address, hit exit to return to the settings index. Then hit the down arrow key to move to the default gateway setting. Again, hit the enter key to enter the router section. We've been assigned a default gateway with the address 10.10.10.3, so I'll and configure that to configure the IP address. Hit the exit key to escape back to the settings index. Hit the down arrow key once to advance to the subnet mask. Hit the enter key to enter this section. We've been asked to mask this meter for a Class C network, so that's 255.255.255.0. I already know that the factory default setting is that, so I'll just step through it once to verify that's how it's still configured. When we're done with that, hit the exit key to return to the settings index. Hit the exit key again to move up to the main category, which was network. Finally, hit the exit key one more time to get out of the settings mode entirely. Anytime you change any of the configuration settings on an M650, the meter prompts you for whether you want to save the changes. Hit the key just below the Y to confirm the changes we've made. After saving the changes, the meter automatically initiates a reboot to make the new settings active. Then it returns to the normal operating mode. At this point, the network address settings have been configured so you can now connect the M650 to your local area network. When you plug in the Ethernet cable, you'll be looking for 
a link light to establish that a network exists. Link light on the M650 is here. Link light on the hub.